What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Outside the Stadium. We have with us today full-time professional baseball player, part-time foodie, part-time TV personality, and now proud father of two baby girls. Thank you for calling. Thank you for coming on, Mark. What's going on? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Happy to awesome. be here. Awesome. I go by Kush, coming at you from the Oakland Athletics Clubhouse as Dero, and coming at you from the comfort of his own home as Harry. Dero, would you like to take it away? Yeah, thank you. Mark, thanks so much for being here. Uh -huh. uh, my first question, you really picked up your power in 2019. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how you improved so much? Um, yeah. Um, I, I just, my mind starts going because I never know how to answer this question just because I don't know if you guys have ever played baseball or I, mean, I know you've interviewed other baseball players but um, I feel like we don't always know what happened and it's just kind of like for me I got on a roll and and just started hitting homers and kind of found a groove and 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 as I've gotten older and kind of smarter about my career I've, I've realized kind of like the what what was the meat and potatoes behind in my swing that that what actually works and I was able to kind of like have some nice foundational things that I've stuck to um that that I think helps with the power um but the the one thing that I will point to that's like a definite thing that helped me was um just realizing I've talked about this a lot before um, was just changing my approach, my mental approach at the plate and being a lot more selective. Um, that was one thing that I attribute a lot of my success to. And you, you mentioned the power, but um, being more selective and kind of shrinking the strike zone for me led to me walking more, getting my on-base percentage up, and then – you know, I don't know if it made me hit more homers, but it certainly bolstered my other numbers around me and kind of kept me confident and kept my kept my numbers good. And I could I could look at my numbers and say, oh, man, look what I'm I'm consciously making this decision to be more selective in the box and it's showing up right away. And so that was like, a, even though I wasn't really if you look at my numbers early in the year last year, I wasn't necessarily hitting a bunch of homers. Um, but those walks, everything kept me in the lineup and kept me as like, you know, oh, well, Mark's having good at bats and it gave me a chance to get, to get playing time, you know, when the time, when my time came. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I wanted to know what are your best memories so far in your career? Um, my best memories have got, I mean, my debut is one of them. I had a really good debut in 15. Um, it was like the third game in the season. I got a start and I went three for five with a couple of doubles and like five RBI. It was like a, an amazing debut. And uh, the playoff experiences were fun. I wouldn't say they're like my top memories just because they both ended in disappointment. Um, trying to think I, I think celebrating like getting into the playoffs both the times we clinched was like because of how long it, it took I mean not it's not that long I guess but you know three years of a lot of ups and downs in my career um, and then in 18 to finally kind of break in and kind of have my coming out party in terms of my own self and then make the playoffs and then again the next year just celebrating those those clinches in the in the clubhouse it was like pretty pretty awesome for me just to just because of how kind of far it felt like I came yeah definitely and you know speaking to that you mentioned 2018 so back in 16 you went down with that hip injury and you had to work your way back up you know through triple a and in, I we know we know how hard it is to make the big leagues in the first place can you just speak to a, to having that kind of setback and you're and focusing on a comeback both mentally and physically any adjustments you may have made yeah um yeah 16 it was so hard it was a lot harder than I expected to um 
to come back from that injury. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, the time away from the game is such a killer because for me, at least, it, it was tough because you have so much time to kind of think and plan and, and you you kind of draw up this mental picture of what it's going to be like when you get back and how you're going to have success. And this is why you're going to be successful because you're thinking about you have this and this and this approach, but it's just all, I mean, it just all goes to hell when you get back and you're actually thrown in the fire and it's just like, wow, this isn't what I thought it was going to be like. And then I, I just got off to a rough start that year. I think I came in like, 10 pounds 10 or 15 pounds heavier than I normally am because I had this mindset that like oh I'm gonna get in the weight room and get really big I'm gonna take this you know injury as an opportunity to get really big and strong and 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 um I just think that that extra like yeah I was big and I had a lot of more muscle and stuff and I felt strong but I kind of felt sluggish like I feel like it didn't really help me to put on that so much extra weight like 10 pounds for a guy like me that I, my plane weight now is like 205 and I came in like over 220 um I think it just I realized like ah, it's not really helping me <laughs> it's kind of if anything slowing me down and and then you know there's also the hitting part which just didn't I couldn't um couldn't really figure it out and I it was just a, a struggle, a season of full of adjustments and just trying to kind of kind of find something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, con congrats on getting it figured out. You definitely did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, any, any athlete, or particularly baseball player, knows it's, it's easy to get into those funks and you just – you can lead yourself into a rabbit hole of, of making – so many adjustments you're in this like endless tailspin of trying to make sense of of your swing and your approach and this and that and it, and it just um it wasn't it wasn't good and, I, and a lot of good came from that you know I think I tried to um take that experience though and learn from it and, and I think I've come out the other end of smarter more experienced athlete so I, I see that you play a lot of uh, first base, and I want to know if you speak a lot to the opposing hitters. Uh, sorry, my daughter's Um uh, Yeah, it is. Do I? The question was about playing first and talking yeah, to the opposing hitters. We all like we all yeah. want. What do you guys talk about at first base? Oh man, it's 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 never that interesting. Um, Sometimes we'll joke. Mostly it's about the game that we're – like the game that we're playing. Like, oh, man, that was – or, you know, nice – usually I compliment them on, like, hey, nice hit, man, nice swing and everything or, or whatever. We just talk about – sometimes I'll, like, ask them about certain guys on their team that I'm kind of curious about, like their personality. Or he'll say, hey, what's up with this, what's up with this guy? Is he a good dude or, you know – I think in, a lot of times I'm interested to know how they like playing for the organization that they're playing for. Um, I don't get to play a lot of first base these days, but but I did really enjoy that aspect of it. And it's, it's always something different. And if I know them, it's just like kind of like friendly banter. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The, the coolest part of that is just like, my rookie year, I think I played a lot of first, actually, and because Olsen wasn't up yet, Matt Olsen, that is. Um, and the reason I got to play a lot that year was Ike Davis went down with an injury. So I was playing a lot of first my rookie year. And, like, playing with, like, you know, Miguel Cabrera, like, gets on first base, and all of a sudden I'm talking to Miguel Cabrera or, like, Big Poppy or, you know, all these dudes that are, like, dudes and that is I think that's the coolest part I you know I couldn't even tell you like about the conversations I had I think actually my debut was um I was playing first and like you know Prince Fielder gets on wait was it yeah that's right it was Texas um 
Prince Fielder gets on first and he's like, Hey man, great job. Like, you know, I, I had a couple hits already. And the first time I get on first base, he's like, dude, great job. Like, he's like complimenting me. I'm like, Oh man, this, this was awesome. Like, like, you know, people, I, it was kind of, I realized like, Oh man, this is the big leagues is like kind of a brotherhood kind of thing. And it was, it was just really cool. In, in 2018 and 2019, you guys made the playoffs. Has that motivated you to kind of get back there? Yeah, I mean, I think we we talked about it a lot this spring before we, we got cut off um, with the corona stuff. But it was kind of a um, collective goal in the clubhouse to not just make the playoffs this year, but to get into the divisional round and try to uh, win the division so that we could avoid that wild card game. Just because it's been, I mean, while the playoffs was such a cool experience, it, it just kind of sucked. And I, both times I, I played in one of the games, I played in, in last year's game against the Rays and I didn't play against the Yankees the year before, but both times played or not played, it just felt like, it was incomplete like it just kind of felt like oh man that was quick like one and done you know we didn't really you, you got no chance to settle into the series or anything it was just like damn it was it's over like we didn't even get a chance to like get redemption from that one game so it was kind of I think as a group we're like we gotta I mean that just sucks like the wild card game sucks I mean it's great if you win and you move on but like you go from celebrating one day to the next day you're just out of it after one it's just like on one game anything can happen and we just have come out unfortunately on the short end but yeah there's we're trying to get back for sure and just make it a little longer the next time <laughs> yeah I totally feel that definitely frustrating seeing a season culminate in one game um but yeah mm -hmm. Let, let's get into this instagram stuff you say you're the the, the big league booty so what does that mean how'd you how'd you get that title how'd that come about well i got that title because i gave it to myself <laughs> um it it just sounded good um i so i've always kind of been into food i i grew up my dad kind of cooked a lot and cooked fancy stuff like he traveled for work and he would eat stuff in Europe and, and everything and, and got was kind of worldly in that way just because he traveled so much. So he he collected food and wine magazines and he kind of had his own like little cookbook. I think he still probably has it. It's like a three ring binder with like cutouts from magazines and newspapers and all these recipes and stuff. Um, so I grew up, you know, as a kid eating like, weird gourmet stuff that other kids i i didn't i probably didn't like a lot of it um but i got to try stuff you know that that not a lot of kids try and just like strange foreign foods um and then i went to cal berkeley and there's kind of a lot of different it's a very diverse place and there's a lot of different foods you can try right around campus there's like all kinds of different stuff um and then uh, you know, life went on and I, I got, I think it was the year, the off season before my rookie year in the big leagues. Um, one of my friends, we were, I was at an alumni game actually at Cal and one of my Cal teammates who also played in the big leagues, still playing, um, Trevor Hildenberger, who was a reliever for the twins. We like went out to dinner with them after this alumni game in Berkeley and and his girlfriend was there and she starts telling me, I see her taking pictures of the food and she's telling me about this food blogging thing. And, and I'm like, Oh, what it like, what, what's, what is this? Why are you doing this? She's like, Oh, I just posted on Instagram and that's my thing. Like, you know, I have a bunch of followers and, and I get paid to do stuff. And like, it's kind of like, she, this is her job. She's like working to make this her job. And I thought that was like, I was like, damn, that's the coolest thing ever. I should, I'd love to do that. And then once I made the team with the A's, I was like, okay, you know, I had went from being 
not very active on social media to like, all right, I'm going to try this and just see what happens. Like, you know, I have a little bit of a platform now. People will start getting some followers. Let's see what happens. And it was really fun. Like it, it gives me, it gave me something to do when I go on the road, which I love. I, I don't like to, I'm not a big gamer or anything. A lot of guys like to stay in the room, play video games and just like do stuff. But I want to get out and like see stuff. And I think going to cool food places is a great way to see cities too. Um, and it's just, it's awesome, man. I love everything about it. I love interacting with the fans and talking about food on there. And, uh, you know, now that I've been doing this for like four or five years now, I feel like I can talk about food with people in that arena, which is fun too for me. So I just really enjoy it. It's like a, it's my hobby basically. And it's become my main hobby is like food in general, cooking, eating at restaurants and everything. Favorite dish. What's your last meal? My last meal. Um, oh God. <laughs> This is a tough one because you what what's your last meal? Is it like something fancy? It's it's up to you, I guess, but like I think a last meal would, would be like kind of like a comfort food situation, right? Like probably something you just love eating and it's not necessarily like because people I've been asked this before. And there is a there's a turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> as as boring as that sounds but it's it's really not boring it's like the best there's this place in san francisco that's like it's a bread it's a bakery it's called um oh man <laughs> i haven't i oh my god um they make their their thing is their bread but they make this turkey sandwich it's like turkey sandwich and it's like turkey, uh, Gruyere cheese. It's like melted. It's like, you know, press like with a penny press and it has broccoli rob in it. It's just like the best sandwich ever. And I can't believe I'm, I'm blanking on <laughs> the name of this restaurant. If you go to this place though, it's like, um, there's like a line, you know, it's like one of those places where there's a line around the out the door and around the corner to get in um but we used to live one year in san francisco we lived like walking you know like five minute walk to it and uh it's the best and if i don't i'm gonna be so mad at myself i'm sure oh, God. my wife's in there with the baby i don't want to bother her <laughs> i'll think of it I'll think yeah, but it's a turkey sandwich from that place. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, I saw that you've had a couple big homers and you bat flipped after. I just want to know your thoughts on bat flipping as a whole. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I here's I like I obviously I love bat flipping. I think that there is as long as it's i don't like the ones that are like planned out that you're like oh he planned that you know like mine i don't like practice bat flipping it's just kind of like excuse me you hit you, you hit the ball you realize it's going to go out and it just whatever comes to you in that moment that's what that's what's so beautiful about it i think that in sports, we live for those kind of organic moments and those big moments that happen. And when you see athletes, you know, whether it's bat flipping or you see in the NBA guys doing something after they make a play or whatever, whatever it may be, I, th I love those moments to see how guys react because we all, as athletes, I think we all surprise ourselves from time to time and, and or, you know, or, we're in such a zone that we're locked in and you you've seen that look in people's eyes too. And, and it's just so fun to see people celebrate and people just, you know, have fun. I think that was one of the things 
after 2017, when I had that tough year after coming off the injury and then having that rough season going up and down in 2018, I kind of came back with that mindset, like, well, that was a lot of, it was pretty tough to have fun that year. And the next year I was like, just go out there and, and enjoy yourself. And I think that's when I started the bat flipping, just kind of started doing it. Cause I was like, this is who I am. I'm going to let my, I'm going to let myself just come out and be myself. And cause this, you know, I know that in my career, every year could be my last year. So why not? I'm going to go out on my terms and, and just being comfortable and be myself. And I think a lot of, a lot of dudes are like the game's kind of changing and shifting towards that. Like guys are just, and, and that's what the fans want to see. People want to see players be themselves. And, and that's what the most entertaining part of sports is. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's sports yeah. is such a, 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 a I hate the old timer, like the purity of the sport and all this nonsense about like fans that are purists and stuff. It's like people flip on the TV to watch sports because they want to feel connected. They like sports. They played them when they were a kid. They want to feel connected to these athletes. And I think that, that that's just part of it. The bat flip. I agree. Is that it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the bat flip. Uh, my next question is, I guess, growing up, you know, who were some of your favorite you know, athletes and some of your role models? Oh, man. Um, well, I grew up a Giants fan, which is all what all the I remember my first fan fest saying that in an interview, like in front of a gym full of people and all the A's fans just were like booing me, basically. <laughs> Um, but I grew up a Giants fan. I was a big Barry Bonds guy who had some bat flip, not bat flips, but like kind of some home run, pimped some home run antics uh, from time to time. And, and I would always, it was, I always liked the showboaty kind of players. And I think it's, it's a good, it kind of connects to the bat flipping question, probably not intentionally, but um I grew up really liking Jerry Rice, who was not that way, but Terrell Owens, too. After Jerry Rice, there was Terrell Owens, and I love T.O. Um, Joe Montana. Um, so that's a good list. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, it's, always, it's just the Bay Area athletes. I like Manny Ramirez a lot. I think um, – if we're talking about role models, it's kind of tough to, to talk about guys who were like uh, in performance enhancing drug conversations as role models. Um, but, you can skip that. You can skip that I part. Know, if you I want. mean, I, those are just my favorite players to watch when I was a kid. And I didn't, you know, I didn't really care about that stuff when I was a kid. Now it's, I, my opinion's a little different, but I still, you know, I still love, I played with Manny Ramirez and I still thought he was like the coolest dude ever. Um, but I, I don't know about role models in sports. I, I think it was just the guys I love to watch and, and, and that's kind of it. I, I don't know if I had a role model. It's, it's yeah, good answer. Thank I, you. I definitely feel you on the energy also as fans and we see you yeah. guys tossing the bat or showing us like we 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 feed off of that like too for sure yeah like we i just i just copied when i was a kid i just copied like what i saw on tv like i i saw kobe bryant do a move in a game i'd be doing that i'd be trying to do that move on the playground at lunch like the next day and and that was like what I loved about and how I learned how to play sports, I feel like, is just like trying to imitate those guys and like doing like Barry or Gary Sheffield's batting stance or like, you know, like having fun. And, and that was all, all, all those, all the athletes growing up that I watched were my role models, Griffey, Bonds. I just wanted to be like those guys so much because I thought, I was so enamored with 
them and with sports. And, and that's all I ever wanted was to be a professional athlete when I was a kid. It was like on that level for me. Yeah, for sure. So quick last thing before we go, I, we, I saw last August you took down a player of the week with four home runs in a week. I just wanted to know what it feels like. Like we all we hear those adages about, oh, maybe the ball it looks like a balloon or this and that. How do you feel when you're in there and you're just locked in? Like, do you feel like a super saiyan? Do you feel the energy? Yeah. Uh, I don't – yeah, it, it does feel like you're just, just, like, very confident in what I was doing. And I remember leading up to that, um, I, I actually struggled for quite a bit leading up to that player of the week. I think I struggled for, like, two weeks I had like a kind of a not a horrible like stretch but like a pretty bad stretch and I made some adjustments and I started to get out of the little kind of funk I felt it too I was like ah, I feel like crap and so I started I got this tripod which I'm using right now for this interview and I just bought it and I was like I'm gonna start watching my video because it my video looks like crap when I watch, you know, like my game video. So I'm gonna start filming my batting practice, my swings in the cage before batting practice. I'm gonna film every swing that I take leading up to the game and watch it before the game to, to see what I am look like before the game, just because I, don't, I, don't, I know what's happening in the game and I don't like it. So I kind of, I did that and I was, you know, I'd sit there and there's like, in Oakland, we have one cage in, in the, it's near the clubhouse. There's like one tunnel for everybody. So like the guys are like, I have to, you know, wait for me to set up my stupid tripod. And, and there's like probably, I'm probably getting on people's nerves, but I'm, I'm like, guys, I, I need to figure this, this stuff out. So I, I go and do my thing and, and I video all, I'm watching video in between rounds. I'm watching the last round that I took just because I want to, you know, I, I'm trying to figure something out. And, and I, and I finally like, okay, I'm looking better, looking better and make more adjustments. Okay. It's getting better. It's getting better. And then sure enough, gangbusters. And, you know, you get comfortable with what you're doing after a few days, like a week goes by and I've been doing this and now, now it's feeling more comfortable because whenever you make adjustments, it feels weird. So once I got feeling comfortable and then I was just like, bam, player of the week. And uh, that was pretty, pretty good feeling to get recognized on that, on that level and, and to, to do something so methodically and see it work um, was really cool. And now, now I'm a video monster. I'm, I, I basically, you know, the way I see it is I don't want to take any bad swings in my training because then it's going to show up in the game. So I want to uh, stay on top of that. Yeah, yeah no, definitely that's, cool to see that, pal. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Mark, we want to thank you so much for coming on. We know you're extremely busy with the new baby. and Congratulations on that again. Yeah, sorry it took me so long to, to get on here with you guys. I, I didn't no intend to get drawn out. You're good. So every, everyone, this has you been. You guys are awesome. Uh, this has been this has been fun, and and I appreciate what you guys are doing. This is cool. Thank you. This has been outside the stadium with Mark Hanna, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you soon. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot, guys.